um, another of the 50 villages will receive the ELA intervention. Um, the ELA intervention is a club which is set up in each of the villages where it's operating, and this club provides training on empowerment, leadership, and health um, to adolescent girls. So 50 of these clubs will uh, 50 of these villages will receive a club and the training which goes along with the club, and they'll also be surveyed. Another 50 of the villages um, will receive not only the club, but each of the adolescent girls which participate in the club will also receive um, a micro loan after they're done the training at the club. Um, so you have three uh, different types of interventions which will be surveyed for this evaluation. So 50 which receive the club, 50 which receive the club plus microfinance, and 50 which will receive uh, nothing at all. So the idea is to compare um, the outcomes between these three uh, types of interventions and see which one is working better um, and what nuances you can, you can spot which would tell you, um, which would give you a net evaluation of the impacts which are derived from this, this program. So we thought it was quite an interesting approach to evaluation and I think uh, will go a long way in, in filling this knowledge gap, especially when it comes to young girls um, and how they're benefiting from, from training and benefiting from empowerment programs. Um, so that's the ELA intervention and yeah, as I say, we hope very much hope in the next uh, couple of weeks or, or months that we'll have some more final outcomes for this, pro for this evaluation to share with you. Um, the other impact evaluation which I'll just touch briefly upon, um, this is a much more, how should I say, traditional impact evaluation which is going on in um, Liberia. We're working with an organization there called Youth Action International. Youth Action International um, is also doing training of women. Um, and the idea of this project is to increase the job skills um, and self-employment of the young women which are participating in the project um, and evaluate the outcomes not only on business creation once they're done the, cra the training, um, but also the larger employment benefits and the increasing in earnings from the women which are participating. Um, this is, I say, a traditional impact evaluation. It's also what we call a randomized control trial where we are, um, we'll be serving 300 uh, young women part that will participate in the program and 300 of the young women that won't be participating in the program. Um, the follow-up survey for this evaluation has also been done and we're also expecting results, um, expecting results shortly. So these are two different, um, different evaluations but you can draw many comparisons between the two in um, West Africa and Liberia and East Africa and Tanzania. Um, just to a bit provide some context into how we're operationalizing our, our work in MNE. Um, Susanna, did you want to maybe address um, another one of these evaluations? I think I can say a couple of Our words Sophia? on the U. Yeah, I can say a couple of words on the Uganda ones and maybe I don't know if Susanna wants to add any other ones. But let me tell you a little bit about the Uganda, the two evaluations that we're trying to design and conduct there. Uh, they both focus on basically the main question uh, we're trying to answer in both cases is what what does it take to to improve and to get uh, youth to run successful businesses and in the first uh, in the entrepreneurship education one we're actually working with in school youth they're in high school and in the start and improve your business one we're actually working with the existing uh, business owners in both cases we're doing what uh, uh, Drew has already de de described as a cross-cutting design. We're randomly uh, selecting youth to participate in different uh, 
arms of, of the program. So in the case of the in-school uh, youth, what we're trying to understand is the value of hard skills versus soft skills. Basically, the youth that already go uh, and, and selected entrepreneurship uh, training in schools will be randomly selected and uh, given either additional uh, training on what are the typical hard skills that are taught in entrepreneurship, so accounting, marketing, financial stuff, or they will be randomly assigned to be um, taught more of what we, we call and there's a debate on the, how you call these, but uh, let's say soft skills, which is more personality traits, the cap capacity of youth to be, to network, to be, uh, to be good business owners, in, uh, in not only in the technical way of, of having good budgets and, and uh, keeping their finances. And so by randomly selecting the youth and, and giving them either more hard skills or more soft skills, we will basically understand what's the value added of these type of skills and what makes it, uh, what, what's really important in terms of, of creating and, and sustaining good businesses. And the size of this evaluation is uh, pretty big. We're working with 5,000 students totally and randomly assigning them to different 200, a total of 200 schools. Uh, for the other evaluation we're working with out of school uh, business owners, we're actually trying to understand if what matters to, uh, to sustain a good business is again the skills or the capital, the capital constraints that uh, business owners face. And to understand again the value added, we're randomly selecting youth and assign them to different arms. So the youth end up having other cash grants or loans to understand if the capital constraint is what matters and to then understand if it's a matter of just having the money or having it as a loan, to, so manage, managing that money in a certain way. And then uh, other youth will be uh, assigned to the Start Your Business ILO uh, training, which will provide them mostly with the skills to improve their business. So again, randomly assigning the, the youth to the different components of this evaluation, we will understand what's the value added. Is it the, the training and the skills or the capital? So yeah, the, the good, a good overview of kind of the, the six evaluations that we're, we're supporting in, in, in Africa. All of them are in Africa. The evaluation can be a very, very long process. So uh, we started investing in these, these programs um, some years ago, and, and none of them have been finished yet. So we still don't have the evidence on, on any, of these, uh, any of these programs, although some of the baseline surveys have been done and reports are available. Um, but we do have evidence on many different other uh, projects and evaluations which are, which are going on in the youth employment realm, and, and that's what I want to get into next. Um, just let me find out how to switch here. Um, so this is our third objectives of our work on evaluations, and that's how do we disseminate the evidence of the monitoring and evaluation work and um, the successful practices in youth employment policies and programs which are going on. I just wanted to show you two examples of how we're doing that and these are a bit easier to do in a webinar format because uh, we're, they're both online, uh, online platforms to share evidence and you have the web addresses of these two platforms um, up on the screen. So the first one I'd like to talk to you about and go into a bit more depth is our youth employment inventory. And the second one is the Yen Marketplace. So here's a screenshot of our youth employment inventory. Um, the youth employment inventory is a, da a database of over 400 youth employment projects all over the world. Um, I think many of them 
are also in, in Africa, um, but we have a lot as well in, in developed countries. So it's not only focusing on developing countries. The, the inventory um, is a collection of evidence. So what we're trying to do is um, have projects on the inventory which have been able to evaluate and provide impact, um, an impact analysis of some of the projects. I'm going to go yeah, directly into the Youth Employment Inventory here and, and show you a bit how it works. So this is, a, um, this is the Youth Employment Inventory. Um, you have at the left of the screen a, a number of different search criteria. Um, so the first one is just a global search of the inventory where you can enter in um, any country, any type of evaluate, any type, type of intervention. The second one is um, by youth employment category. So there's five different categories that you can browse through from skills training to entrepreneurship promotion to employment services to subsidized employment to um, labor market reforms. The third category is by type of evaluation. Um, so this is quite helpful for those that are really looking at rigor, re really looking to find rigorous um, evidence stemming from evaluation. So you have four different types of evaluations which you can search by, um, from um, somewhat rigorous to very rigorous. So you have um, an evaluation that provides basic descriptive information on the project or on the evaluation. You have um, evaluations which are process evaluations, um, which are more um, looking at the step-by-step -step process of implementing um, a youth employment project. You have impact evaluation, which we just talked about, uh, which are evaluations which have used the counterfactual to estimate impact. And you have uh, the fourth category is evaluations which are impact evaluations but have also done some type of a cost-benefit analysis. So looking at um, what has been the cost per beneficiary of doing the project. Um, the fourth category that we use are the quality of intervention. So this would be um, looking at has the project been able to produce positive, um, zero, or negative, uh, negative impact? So you have here um, intervention had negative impact, intervention had zero impact, intervention had positive impact, um, and the fourth category, there's not enough evidence to make an assessment. So I'm just going to bounce into um, and, and I guess the fifth category which we have over here would be to browse projects by region. So I'm just going to pop into Africa here um, to give a bit of a demo. Um, then you have all countries in Africa which would be displayed in the search criteria. Click on Benin. So Benin, as I said, there's, there's only there, there's 400 um, project, um, entries of projects into the inventory. So sometimes you only have one per country other countries will have several, so I've taken a look at Benin here. Click on the Benin, um, and then you get your final result. So, um, here you get a number of different categories um, in the inventory, which can be used for for research purposes, um, for application purposes, for just informational purposes. You get a description of the intervention. Um, you get a status of the intervention, if it's been completed, whether it's ongoing, whether it hasn't started yet. So this project was run from 2000 to 2005. Get a description of the beneficiaries. And then you get down to uh, what I think is the more interesting information um, about the evaluation that was undergone. So you can see from this project, it had an impact evaluation um, from 2000 to 2005 you get the results of this impact evaluation. So 22,000 people received the project. The evaluation design was experimental. Um, 
and it gives you a description um, of how uh, what methodology was used 